if everyone in the world wants a Bitcoin, we cannot engineer more Bitcoins. It's the only fixed supply, the only truly scarce thing in the world. Bitcoin can change the world because the world cannot change Bitcoin. The world can change iPhones. The world can change hamburgers. The world can change stocks. The world can change real estate. The world can change the dollar. The world cannot change Bitcoin. It is the only scarce engineered asset in the history of our species. So therefore, Bitcoin is the only thing in the world where more demand has to find a higher price. Strike CEO Jack Mallers predicts Bitcoin's meteoric rise is far from over, calling it the ultimate weapon against inflation and economic chaos. With adoption accelerating globally, Bitcoin's limitless potential as a financial revolution is undeniable, securing its dominance as the world's most coveted asset. What sets Bitcoin apart, Mallers explains, is its ironclad scarcity. Unlike consumer goods like iPhones or McDonald's cheeseburgers, where manufacturers can churn out more to meet demand, Bitcoin's supply is immutably capped. This means that surging demand must come from acquiring existing coins, inevitably driving prices higher. Mallers draws a sharp contrast between Bitcoin and traditional investments like stocks or real estate, calling it the antithesis of monetary decay. But Bitcoin isn't just a hedge, it's a game changer. Its value is encoded in its scarcity, making it the only asset where demand instantly and predictably boosts price. Mallers also highlights Michael Saylor's leveraged Bitcoin product, MST, which allows savvy investors to exponentially grow their Bitcoin exposure. For those who understand its power, Bitcoin isn't just a bet, it's the future of money, rewriting the rules of wealth creation forever. As we bring you clips from his recent discussion, please take a little time to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for joining us again, enjoy the video. For everything in life, with more demand, you will find more supply. If everyone in the world wants an iPhone, Apple can make more supply and give everyone an iPhone. If everyone in the world wants a McDonald's cheeseburger, McDonald's will make sure they find a way to make every single customer a cheeseburger. The only thing where that's not true is Bitcoin. If everyone in the world wants a Bitcoin, we cannot engineer more Bitcoins. It's the only fixed supply, the only truly scarce thing in the world. Bitcoin can change the world because the world cannot change Bitcoin. The world can change iPhones. The world can change hamburgers. The world can change stocks. The world can change real estate. The world can change the dollar. The world cannot change Bitcoin. It is the only scarce engineered asset in the history of our species. So therefore, Bitcoin's the only thing in the world where more demand has to find a higher price. If you want more Bitcoin, you have to get it out of the market, not out of the ground, not out of a fryer, not out of Apple's headquarters. You have to get it from the market, from those that have it. And so if you want more Bitcoin, you got to bid it to a higher price. So that is what we're seeing. Bitcoin is the most performant asset in the world because it's the scarcest asset in the world. It's the only asset that demands higher price for more supply. That's what we're seeing, period. And for all the people that are like, well, Bitcoin, you know what you know what it is? It's just correlated to the stock market. It's just correlated to the election. No, Bitcoin is not a hedge. Everything else in the world outside of Bitcoin, precious metals like gold are correlated to earnings, to cash flows, to performance, to quarterly reports. Bitcoin is not. Bitcoin is not. Bitcoin is a solution. It is not a hedge. Bitcoin is a solution. It is not a hedge. Bitcoin, when you look at Bitcoin, it's the best reflection of currency debasement. It's the most performant reflection of currency debasement. That's all it is. And so Bitcoin is not a hedge. Bitcoin is a solution. Bitcoin is the only scarce thing you can own, period. Your time and your Bitcoin, everything else you can make more of. That's it. That's it. That's why the only two things I value are my life and my Bitcoins. Nothing else matters to me because you can always make more of them. The smartest thing you could have done over the last 15 years is take dollars and put it into Bitcoin. At any point, now we're at all-time highs, at any point over the last 15 years, the smartest thing you could have done ever is take dollars and put it into Bitcoin, period. And so sailors doing that. Now, 
What's unique about what Sailor's doing? Sailor is selling you leveraged Bitcoin. Let me explain. Here's the product Sailor sells you. You have $100,000, let's say. I'm just picking a round number. Whatever, $10, $1, $10,000, $100,000. Say you have $100,000. What Sailor is saying is if you give me your $100,000 in the form of buying MSTR, I will get you more sats, more Bitcoin than if you do it yourself. This is Sailor's Bitcoin yield, sats per share. What he's doing is he's engineering you more sats per share. So if you buy MSTR, he's saying, I will get you more sats in the underlying how a share is correlated to Bitcoin on the balance sheet. I will get you more sats than if you were to do it yourself. Now, the trade-off is very obvious. You've got counterparty risk with Sailor. You've got counterparty risk with the stock market. You've got counterparty risk with the US government. I told you guys, I prefer my sats on ice. I prefer, prefer my sats in cold storage. The price I put on my own self-sovereignty and on counterparty risk, I just don't mess with it. I'm at a point in my life where I don't want to trust anyone else outside of myself. That's just where I'm at. But the product that Sailor sells is extremely valuable, is that if you give me the money, I'll get you more Bitcoin. That's incredibly valuable product. And in that way, MSTR is like 150% exposure to Bitcoin. So when Bitcoin goes up, MSTR should go even further higher. When Bitcoin goes down, MSTR is going to perform even worse. But what that's the product is sale, sailor selling is... According to Jack Mallers, the Bitcoin market's significant buying activity is noteworthy, given its market capitalization of $1.7 trillion. Moving this market needs big resources, and institutional buying is fueling expansion. Bitcoin ETFs have generated nearly $7 billion in 24-hour trading, showing Wall Street's interest. Mallers highlights the game theory underpinning Bitcoin, claiming that it is advantageous to be on Bitcoin's team because of its scarcity and worth. Jack Mallers observes that governments, corporations, and individuals are realizing this and investing in Bitcoin. The U.S. government's prospective strategic Bitcoin reserve is a huge step toward instilling trust in the country's promises. This action might have far-reaching consequences for Bitcoin and the world economy, setting off unprecedented game theory. Mallers believes that this message resonates globally. Let's watch more clips from Jack Mallers' discussion. The buying activity um, we are seeing in the Bitcoin market is substantial. You're talking about an asset class that is now worth over, well over a trillion dollars. Actually, let me tell you exactly how much Bitcoin's worth. Bitcoin sits at $1.7 trillion market cap. So in order to move this market, you can't convince your dad to go download Strike and buy Bitcoin. In order to move this market, you got to have some real size, some real capital. Uh, and the fact that Bitcoin's gone so big now just so everyone knows, I know this is simple math, but it's math. And sometimes the simple questions are the best questions. It doesn't take another trillion dollars to move the of capital of buying to move the market a trillion dollars, right? When you've got something as scarce as Bitcoin, it doesn't take a lot of money to move it substantially. Meaning it could take $2 billion to move Bitcoin, $200 billion in market cap, because there's not a lot of people selling. But nonetheless, you cannot move this market now with a bunch of retail friends at the pub. You used to be, back in the day, um, I, we used to be able to, to move this market with a bunch of uh, people at our Bitcoin uh, meetups, but that's not true anymore. That was true 12 years ago. So today, it's a lot of institutional buying. I think the Bitcoin ETFs hit almost $7 billion of 24-hour volume today. Um, and so we know Wall Street is here, but it does to me look like um, there is some substantial size and pool of capital that is buying Bitcoin. And um, just think about the game theory, to be totally honest with you. Listen, this has been true for 15 years. You're better off on Bitcoin's team than not. I'm going to say that again. You are better off on Bitcoin's team than not, period. Whether you're a country, a president, a CEO, a corporation, an individual, a mistress, whatever, whoever you are, you're better off on Bitcoin's team. And so I think the game theory is realizing itself in that way. And that's, you know, part of the game theory in which Satoshi designed this thing. It's true today. It's very, very true after Trump won the election. Trump's been very public about his stance on Bitcoin, his relationship with the SEC, the idea of a strategic reserve. This is all very public. And so if you're a country 
or any large pool of capital. Listen, the total value of assets in the world is like $900 trillion or something absolutely asinine. There's a lot of wealth that's better off on Bitcoin's team than not. And the fact that the U.S. government is saying one of the ways we want people to potentially buy in to the promises on our future of the country is by building a reserve of Bitcoin. I can't even state to you the level of importance in the order, like how, how massive that is for both our country and for Bitcoin. That is our strategy being built in front of our eyes is saying we're a country built on future promises as the world reserve currency um, on debt. And people are starting to question the promises we are making to our allies, to other countries, to our peers, to the public, to our people. And in order to instill confidence in the people that we hear their feedback, we know there's been a, a wane in trust and in confidence in us in order to reassure them that we believe in growth, equality, technology, hard money, hard assets, we're going to start backing our promises with Bitcoins. That's massive. And the game theory that that sets off is unfathomable. And so do I think that that message is now loud and clear and resonates and well understood globally? Yeah, 100%. I mean, wake up CNBC talking about world reserve Bitcoin stockpile. So I don't know if I were a smaller country or any other country for that matter, um, would I front run Trump? Yeah. Bitcoin stands alone as the only asset where rising demand directly fuels an immediate price surge, Mallers declared, spotlighting its ingenious design of absolute scarcity and magnetic allure. While other goods can be endlessly produced to satisfy demand, Bitcoin's fixed supply guarantees that as interest grows, so does competition, pushing its value ever higher in a relentless battle for a finite treasure. Tom Lee, Fundstrat's head of research, also sees Bitcoin's recent surge, up 34% in November, now consolidating near 91,395, as the beginning of a significant long-term rally. Lee ties Bitcoin's momentum to broader market movements, pointing to parallels with the Nasdaq and S&P 500. He explains that Bitcoin's rise is consistent with patterns seen during previous Trump trade conditions, where deregulation, lower taxes, and reduced government spending boosted risk assets. Lee further notes that macroeconomic shifts, such as the potential end of the Federal Reserve's tightening cycle, could fuel even greater demand for both traditional and digital assets. In his view, Bitcoin's appeal lies in its dual role as a hedge against macroeconomic uncertainty and a strategic asset for navigating volatile economic climates. Together, Mallers and Lee present Bitcoin as more than a speculative asset. It's a paradigm shift. Mallers emphasizes its scarcity as a feature that guarantees value, while Lee highlights its resilience in complex market dynamics. Whether as a tool to counter inflation, a hedge against uncertainty, or a cornerstone of future financial systems, Bitcoin's rise signals more than just a rally, it's the emergence of a new global monetary order. Do you agree that Bitcoin's scarcity and decentralized nature ultimately drive its long-term success and widespread acceptance as a reserve asset? Please drop your thoughts in the comments below, share this video, and hit your thumbs on the like button. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.